problem is we have the salt x. Just the pick color and state of the salt. So we have the salt x and we want to try to figure out what the salt is. So we're going to CSI investigation is going to go on here. Hmm. So the first thing we're going to look for is the cut iron. So to determine what the cut iron is, we're going to take just a tiny, tiny little bit of salt, like a little tiny. I just, nah. I just. Even less. I just want uh, mm -hmm. tiny, tiny. And we put in a mini test. Now we're going to add sodium hydroxide drop wise. And what we're looking for is a change in solubility and a change in color. So drop wise literally means one drop and shake it up. One drop and shake it up. Maybe we could do a couple more. Now, when you're doing salt analysis, it's always a good idea to look at the bottom of the test tube so you can see what's really going on. And if you look at the bottom of the test tube, you'll notice there's a white precipitate that was formed drop wise. Now, we're just going to continue with that. So, we're going to test tube. But this time, we're going to add the sodium hydroxide in excess. So, that means about five drops in a row. Shake it off. Five drops in a row. Shake it off. And what we're looking to see is whether or not the salt dissolves. Now, because we use a good bit of this salt, we're looking to see whether a little bit dissolved, even just a little bit, would be fine. And if you look, you'll realize from the top, you'll realize that some of the salt has dissolved. So we're gonna note this um, observation as our white precipitate was soluble in excess. So that's the end of test one. I know that all of the salt didn't dissolve, but some dissolved because what we have at the end is a little less than what we started with. So white precipitate soluble in excess. Test tube 2. Little bit of salt again. Yeah. This time we're going to add aqueous ammonia. Same procedure, but notice we're using a different dropper. You're looking for a change in color and a change in solubility. From the bottom of the test tube, we definitely see in a white precipitate. Alright, so now we're going to add an excess. And we could see from this test tube, now in this one you're definitely seeing that that white precipitate was insoluble in excess. You see how chalky and milky it's looking as compared to the first test tube? This one, this is why I'm saying it's a white precipitate soluble in excess as opposed to a white precipitate insoluble in excess. Now this doesn't help us to narrow down the cut iron yet, so we're going to do one more confirmatory test. So a little bit of salt once more. I 
at this time we're going to use some potassium iodide again we're looking for a change in color and a change in solubility whoa did you get a change in color all right so that bright yellow precipitate that you see in we can't argue with that as soon as you see that bright yellow precipitate with ki we know that the cation is lead all right so now that we show what the cation is we're just gonna go ahead and test the anion so a little bit of salt and to this we're gonna add some silver nitrate we're looking for a precipitate. If there's a precipitate, it means chloride, bromide, or iodide is present. If there's no precipitate, it means that none of these things are present. If you look at the bottom of the test tube, that's the still a salt sample. And our sample seems to be dissolving. See, the solution is colorless. So, because no precipitate has been formed, it really means no chloride, bromide, or iodide ions are present. See on the bottom of the test tube? It's starting to dissolve, right? Yeah, actually almost completely dissolved so no chloride bromide or iodide ions are present so if none of these things are present then we need to go ahead and test for a nitrate so new test tube there's a little salt now this test is actually a little bit dangerous I feel you need a little more salt this time. Yeah. Now to this, we're going to add some copper tinners. Now copper tinners are really cool to look at. It's like if you take a five cents and grate it up on a grater. So it should on the copper tinners. Mm -hmm. And we're going to take like just a little bit. I mean, putting it into the test tube. To this, we're going to add about 10 drops of very concentrated sulfuric acid. And then we're going to heat this test tube on an open flame. Now, I mean, oh, 10. You know the dangers of heating acid. You know the dangers of acid without even heating it. But Nathaniel here is very brave. He is going to risk his good looks to heat this <laughs> to heat this test tube. He said, "All in the name of science." And we're gonna just observe what's going to happen. So we're gonna move. We're gonna take a field trip to the front bench where the Bunsen burner is. going to hold the test tube at a 45 degree angle so that it doesn't face his face. He can put it into the flame. Yeah, I turn up and you see the bubbles. Now every time you get pop 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 pop, you can just put the bubbles out of the flame. Right, and what we're going to do is test this gas here with some flame. Litmus. And notice my blue litmus is already starting to turn pink or red. What does that say about the gas that's coming off? You can tell me in the discussion. Now 
if we're very quiet. You actually hear any pop, 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 pop. That's happening. Let me test you. Now, if you don't mind your business when you're doing this test, that solution could jump out of the test tube. And if your lab partner is standing here, it's going to come off into their face. And we don't want that to happen, right? You are all very pretty children. Fair enough. I'm yeah. finding you can breathe. Yeah, I can't breathe. Yeah, I can't breathe. Yeah. Not the color of the inside of the test tube now. It's very cool. And inside of the test tube, you've seen the stain where the gas was released. What color was the gas? You've seen it as a stain on the test tube. Right, so we're going to put that in our observations as well. And next time I see you, we're going to talk about what an ion was present in salt. So, Hans Nathaniel.